Okay, let's catch up. Uh, the slides walk you through what the error was. Step two. Okay, so let's go on to step two. Okay, so step two, try and run step two, and at step two.cfg line 30, we have an error. It says time dependent non dimensional. Uh, Non-dimensional quasi-static relaxation time is two years. Name years is not defined. So let's load up step 02. So it said line 30. So I'm going to go down here to line 30. And I have years. I'll notice down here I have year, um, and this is a the units are a pyre feature, and so just to show you how you can get what the units are, I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to load up the Python, and I'm going to show you. Um, so I, with the pyloth binder, I've, we include Python, and so you have the full language here, and so I can import. The power units time module, so I can import it. I can then do a sort of directory of power units time. And this gives me all of my time units. So let's see, I see day, hour, micro, microseconds, milli, millisecond, minute, nano, nanosecond, ns, pico, picosecond, ess, second. There's a microsecond and year. So you'll see it's instead of years, everything is in uh, singular. So that means back up here, I should use year instead of years. For length scales, I can import power units length and do a directory on the length. And so these are all of the different length scales that Pyleth knows, angstrom, astronomical units, centimeters, fathoms, foot, inches, kilometers, light years, meters, micrometers, miles, millimeters, nanometers, nautical mile, parsecs, yards. So you can do all sorts of um, different length scales. And one thing I should show you is if you do power units at time, that year, it shows you the year in seconds. So everything it gets, when it, all the units, they convert everything to SI units, um, and then we non-dimensionalize uh, within Pyleth. And so with the support of units, um, think of everything being converted to SI units and then non-dimensionalized. So when you see uh, things being held internally within Pilot in terms of a lot of our output. Uh, sometimes we don't know what, how to non-dimensional or how to sort of give the right scale. So all of our time stepping information tends to be shown in seconds. And so just remember that 3.15 times 10 to the seventh is uh, roughly a year. So let's get I'll exit out of the Python interpreter. Now let's continue. We fixed our years to year. So let's run step two again. And we have another error. And here's our stack trace. We're verifying the configuration. Here's our error message. Quadrature is incompatible with cell for fault, fault. EXT cell 256 has four edges, but quadrature reference cell has three edges. So my cell has four edges. That's suggesting it's a quadrilateral. 
My quarter to reference cell has three edges, suggesting that the reference cell is a triangle. So let's go look at fault VXT. And I see quadrature cell dimension two. So I, let's uh, see if I can get pilot help on this. I need to see where I am in the hierarchy here. So here is my hierarchy. Let's see if I can get some help here. Um, okay, let's see. What do I have? Oh, it said. Uh, I see it says pilot app. I don't, you when you, oops. When you do the help, dash dash help, you don't actually include the uh, pilot, up, pilot app out front. You don't need that. So here I am, and I see I have a quadrature. So in that components, I have a quadrature. So let's do quad. Let's, let's just, well, let's just do help dash components. That'll show me what that quadrature is. So, uh, I need, do need to drill down one more. Quadrature help. So I have cell. So let's get. So there's my cell. Here we go. Cell is a reference cell with base functions and quadrature rules. Current value is fiat simplex. And remember, if I have triangles or tets, that's a simplex cell. But if I have quadrilaterals or hexahedra, that's a, fiat, that's a Lagrange cell. So I have the wrong cell type for my quadrature. So quadrature. It is, if I were to look up in the pilot manual in Appendix B, I would see that the cell is Fiat Lagrange. So let's see what I get after I do that. So now, before it was fiat simplex from default. Now, after I've updated my step 02.cfg file, when I do the same help, you can see that I've changed it to fiat Lagrange, and that was at line 100. So. Let's try running step two again. And, and I get another error. And it says determinant of Jacobian one times 10 to the minus seven for cell zero is smaller than minimum proportional value of one times 10 to the minus six. The two most likely causes of this are highly distorted cells and non-dimensionalization with a length scale that is much larger than the dimensions of the cells. So, this was mentioned in this morning session in terms of a question about these Jacobians being smaller than the permissible value. So let's look and see what our length scales are. Um, let's do, I see where it is. I think it is under, it's normalizer is the name of the component. So I think that's under problem. So there's my normalizing problem normalizer to help dash property. So here are my length scales. My length scale default value is a kilometer. My current value is um, a million. 
from line 28 as step 02. So let's go up to line 28. Here's my length scale. So here I said, oh, 1 times 10 to the, I was probably thinking 1 times 1,000 meters, and I put 1,000 kilometers. So let's just make that 1 kilometer. Easier readability. readability. And now if I run that same help again, you notice my length scale, the default value, and is the same as the current value, and it tells me where it actually is getting it from. So I, even though it's the same value, I did override the default. Let's run step 02 again. And another error. So it says, could not find value left lateral slip in spatial database final slip. Available values, that's the values that are currently in the spatial database, lateral slip, reverse slip, fault opening. So here, Pilot is looking for this value, and these are the three values it found. So clearly, I forgot how lateral slip is labeled. It's left lateral slip and not just lateral slip. So it was in the final slip database. So I need to look and see what file that is. So let's look for final slip. Oops. I need to be able to spell that correctly. So here's my spatial database final slip. Ah, it was not a in a simple database. It was right here in my uniform database. So I need to make sure that that says left lateral slip. And let's go back and run again. And I get another runtime error. This time it says vertex with label 396 on negative side of the fault, fault ext is constrained. Fault vertices cannot be constrained. And that is true. So I have tried to place a Dirichlet boundary condition on a vertex that is part of the fault. And we don't allow this because we're trying to impose a prescribed slip on the fault and if we constrain what the displacement is uh, we cannot uh, enforce both of those constraints in general simultaneously there are maybe specific cases where that is a where that can be done um, but uh, in general that is not possible and so pilot uh, does not allow that to be the case. So uh, the main thing we often do is we usually create a node set that does not have the z degree of freedom in there. So fault face so far z was it I think or z degree of freedom? Oh, I don't know which one it was. Uh, so we better look at our Geometry file. What was our? So here's our qubit script. And let's see what we have in here. So that's the qubit. That's. Here's our boundary conditions. Okay, so here we created a face z neg no fault. I see we also we also have fault and fault edge. So I have to decide what what I really want. Do I want an embedded fault or do I want uh, the boundary so do I want the boundary condition and my fault to be smaller or my fault to continue to all the way to the edge and uh, just eliminate have a smaller boundary condition um, so I'm going to pick that we do this so I'm going to make my boundary condition not include the faults and let's see if that works Uh, that did not change anything. 
screen. Did I label it correctly? I did. Um, let's look at. I'm not sure which one. What my. Oops. We better look and see what we actually wanted here. So we fixed our. I'm just going to flip to the slides till we get to that error and see what I really wanted to do. So we fixed the quadrature. Uh, we fixed the non dimensionalization. We fixed that one. And so, ah, what I didn't mean to use was a through going fault. So, in this case, I want fault rather than fault extension. So, let's go back. And go to the fault. So we'll use the node set that is just fault. And go back to terminal. Error computing orientation of cell face cannot resolve tangential components into unambiguous directions. Up direction zero zero one cannot be parallel to the face normal zero zero one. If the face is horizontal, adjust the up dip parameter. So it's in the fault initialization, so I know it's initializing the fault. My fault is vertical, so I'm a little confused of why it thinks uh, I, my face normal has. Um, my face normal here is in the up direction, but I can still fix this by changing the up direction. So let's see, did I set the up direction? I did not. So I, let's just put in up direction equals, it doesn't have to be a unit vector. That'll all be taken care of. So let's see what happens. Okay, it ran. So let's take a look at the output. Um, step two. Uh, fuzzing. So for one thing, let's look at the fault output. And uh, that's a pretty crazy fault. And let me load up the domain. And let's do a wireframe on the domain. So here you can see that in this case I have an embedded fault. And uh, what I want my fault, I really want it to be just a portion of this surface. So what has happened is instead of having my fault surface trimmed nicely at the edges, Pilot has just gone and adjusted the topology and it's all crazy around the edges because it didn't know what I wanted to do. So this is one of those new features where if I mark the buried edges of my fault, um, I can have a nice neatly trimmed fault surface in the interior of my domain. So what we do is instead of getting set in the up direction to try and get it to just run, what I want to do is I want to say, uh, I believe it's, I should use the pilot info to tell me what it wants. So let's walk down the hierarchy here. I am in time dependent interfaces fault. And I should do help properties. So there's my up direction, there's my label ID, and it's edge. So edge is currently, this is the label identifier for the fault edge, default value zero, current value zero. So what I want to do is I want to say edge is equal to, I don't remember the name of the node set. So let's go back to our journal. File here, 
And the name of the fault edge is fault edge. So let's give it edge equals fault edge. And let's rerun it again. So that ran great. Let's go back to Paraview. We'll reset our session. And let's load up. Our fault again. Ah, that fault looks better. Let's load up our domain, make the domain wireframe, and so there's our nice, beautiful little faults in there. Three cells or three cells by four cells. And let's so let's turn off the faults. Let's deform the domain. Actually, we'll try a thousand, see what that does. Doesn't look like it deformed very much. About 4,000. What is the displacement? There's no displacement. Is this a time dependent problem? Looking at information. So I do have a displacement. Ah, I should color by displacement. There we go. Ah, I see. So I have, you can barely see it. So this is where having the, you don't see that much when I just do the, vo whoops, when I just do the surface, if I don't color it, can't really see the offset of the mesh if I do a surface with edges with the warping there I'll show you but you can see that uh, here at the edge of the fault I have zero slip and then in here in the middle of the fault I have um, some distribution of slip but it's automatically pinned right at the edges um, to be zero and so that ends up with uh, I believe I constrain the normal degree of freedom on this boundaries so that uh, really pinned what the displacements were at the boundary so it really confines the deformation to the area right around the fault so we've finished step two are there any questions about any of the ways we diagnosed things in this example I don't see any evidence of typing. So we still have one more example to run through. Step 03. So let's clear.